Here we have an example from uh, the mechanics of materials class. So as you can see, we have a 2D image here that is showing the rectangular uh, cross section of a member. So this cross section has width of six inches and height of eight inches. Um, we are also seeing the Y axis and the Z axis as well as the centroid point C. So now we have a bending moment that is applied to this cross section and the bending moment as a vector is shown here. The magnitude is 100 kip inch, kip is kilopound, and the direction is at a 30 degree angle with the Z axis. So the question asks, what is the absolute maximum bending stress at this cross section caused by this bending moment? So, a usual way to solve this is to recognize that this moment vector can be resolved into the two components, so MY along the Y direction and MZ along the Z direction. So that can be done easily using uh, trigonometry. And from there, we can apply the flexure formula to determine the maximum bending stress caused by these two MY and MZ components individually, right? So according to trigonometry, MZ equals to 100 kip inch times cosine 30 degree, uh, which is 86.6 kip inch, and the maximum bending stress caused by MZ can be determined by the Fletcher formula. So MZ times CZ. CZ is this maximum distance, which is half of eight inch. So that's a four inch divided by IZ, which is area moment of inertia about the Z axis. So the formula for a rectangle is 112 BH to the third power, 112 times B, which is the width of six inch times the height eight to the third power. So the result is 1.353 KSI. So that will be maximum at the top and bottom edges and zero here in the along the Z axis. And because of the direction of the moment, we can tell that it is tensile at the bottom and then a compressive at the top. And then we can calculate MY also using trigonometry. So MY is a 50 kip inch. And from flexor formula again, we can calculate the maximum bending moment caused by MY. So now CY in this flexor uh, formula is this maximum distance. So it's three, which is half of six and then divided by IY, which is the area moment of inertia, about the y-axis. So you can see that the width and height uh, have switched from before. So we calculate this much is the maximum bending stress. And because of the uh, direction of MY, MY creates a bending effect that's counterclockwise about the y uh, direction, right? So we can tell that this is tensile here on the left edge and then compressive on the entire right edge and then zero along the y-axis. So after we have done this uh, preparation calculation, the question is, how do we combine them? And in order to achieve the combined bending stress and determine the absolute maximum bending stress. And also the combined bending will change the neutral axis. So the neutral axis is where the normal stress is zero. And we need to determine where that neutral axis is and as well as the angle made by the neutral axis with the Z axis. So that requires some imagination, some uh, 3D visualization skill. And um, it could be a little bit challenging if you are not used to that. So the purpose of this video is to use 3D animation to demonstrate that. So hopefully it can help you understand uh, and tackle similar problems in the future. So here is our 
2D rectangular cross-section again with the y-axis and the z-axis. There's also an x-axis, but we cannot really see it in this view because the x-axis is perpendicular to the yz plane. But if I rotate this member, so now you can see the member in 3D demonstration and you can see the actual x-axis that is perpendicular to the yz plane. Let's look at the bending moment mz first demonstrated here in this animation. So you can see how the bending moment mz is creating a bending effect that is um, concave upwards about the z-axis. And this will cause linear distribution of the bending stress tensile below the z-axis uh, elongating the member at the bottom, but compressive above the z-axis, shortening the member at the top. It is important to recognize that according to the flexure formula, the bending stress has a linear distribution, and that's why I can draw a straight line like this, varying from a negative value to a positive value with zero at the center, the centroid position. According to our previous calculation, the maximum tensile stress is 1.353 KSI at the bottom edge of this member, and the maximum compressive stress has the same magnitude of 1.353 KSI, but it is at the top edge of this member. So with these arrows representing the stress elements hidden in the member is difficult to visualize. So usually we will pull these arrows outside of the member for better visualization. Like this. This should be similar to the textbook images that you probably have seen. And similarly, we can visualize the bending moment MY, which is counterclockwise about the y-axis, as well as the normal stress element uh, caused by this bending moment MY. So now we have the normal stress distribution caused by the component moment MZ, as well as the normal stress distribution caused by the moment MY. According to our previous calculation, it is tensile on the left and compressive on the right. Maximum magnitude is 1.042 KSI. So to combine them, we need to add all these stress elements together. But how do we determine the final values? At this point, it looks very confusing, even overwhelming. But don't forget, the bending stress distribution is a linear function in one direction and a constant in the other direction. So when we add two of these sets of distributions together, we will still get linear functions in either direction. So with that said, all we need to do is to focus on the corners. If we can determine the values for these four corners, then we can use linear function to determine the distribution. Remember, we calculated these stress elements already. And when we're combining them, if they are of the same direction, they amplify each other and get longer. And if they are of opposite direction, they cancel a portion off and become shorter. And we can use algebra to determine the final values. So now all we have to do is to add the stresses that we calculated before for these corners respectively. And these are actually the answer to our first question. So here, remember, the uh, question asks, what is the absolute maximum bending stress for this cross-section? So these two are both the correct answer because their absolute values are maximum for this bending stress distribution. It's just one is uh, compressive, the other one is tension.
next, we still have the next question, which is to determine the neutral axis. In order to determine that, we'll go back to 3D visualization again. If we push the two compressive stresses into the member again, these four arrows actually form a plate. And this plate will intersect with this cross section here as shown in this red line. And this red line is the neutral axis. This is because where the plates intersects with this cross section, corresponds to where the normal stress has a zero value. So uh, now we can visualize this uh, neutral axis. How do we determine its position? So for that, we can go back to algebra again. And here we have the 2D view of the left side of the member, as well as the right side of the member. The height is 8 inch. And based on our previous calculations, we know that uh, this stress value as well as this stress value from that, we can draw a straight line to determine the stress distribution on the left edge. So this is the point where the stress distribution intersects with the cross section corresponds to a stress value of zero. So this is the first point of our neutral axis. So the question is, what is this uh, distance x right here? You can certainly apply your knowledge of a linear function to solve for x, but an easier way is to recognize that we have two similar triangles. So we can use similar triangles to find x. So x, which is this portion right here, the ratio between x and this arrow right here, which is uh, which has a length of 0.311, equals to this right here, which is 8 minus x versus this arrow right here, which has a length of 2.395. Based on this equation, you can solve for x. This is just one of the methods. Uh, you can certainly apply other methods. Okay, so that's for the location on the left edge. For the right edge, similarly, we have determined these two values. You can see how they're just uh, flipped, right? And similarly, we can draw a straight line to determine the stress distribution on the right edge. And again, this is the point of the intersection, and that's the point of interest. And we need to determine what this x is. We can, again, use similar triangles. But because of these two values are simply flipped, right? Um, so this x right here simply equals to the overall height of 8 minus the previous answer. So this right here simply equals to 8 minus 0 0.919, which is 7.081 inch. So after we have determined the locations for these two points of intersection, once again, these two are the two points, two endpoints for our neutral axis. So now we can draw this red line that is our neutral axis. This distance is determined to be 0 0.919 inch. And from here to here is our 7.081 inch. And the question asks, the for the angle made by the neutral axis with the z axis which is this theta angle right here and we can simply apply trigonometry to determine theta so theta equals to arc tangent this height divided by this length right here so tangent inverse 4 minus 0 0.919 that's this portion right here divided by 3 which is half of 6 and the answer is 45.8 degree. And that is the final answer for this problem. And here you can see the final result of the normal stress distribution caused by the original bending moment. The stress follows linear distribution in all x, and y, and z direction. It's a little bit difficult to see, that's because once again, the compressive normal stress elements have been pulled out of the member. Um, but if I put these two plates in, 
You can see that this plate is actually the same as the original yellow plate, but bent along the neutral axis. So this is the end of this video, and hopefully this example has helped you with better 3D visualization with asymmetric bending problems.